General Introduction to Data Warehousing What is a data warehouse? A data warehouse is an environment, not a product. A data warehouse system has the following characteristics. It provides a centralized utility of corporate data or information assets. It is contained in a well-managed environment. It has consistent and repeatable processes defined for loading operational data. It is built on an open and saleable architecture that will handle future expansion of data. It provides tools that allow its users to effectively process the data into information without a high degree of technical support. Operational Systems versus Data Warehousing Systems Operational Systems Operational systems are those that assist a company or an organization in its day-to-day -day business to respond to events or transactions. Data Warehousing Systems Data warehouses is where data of companies' information are captured and stored to define what they have done right and therefore should continue to do, as well as what they have done wrong and should not be allowed to happen again. Differences between operational and data warehousing systems Size and content The goals and objectives of a data warehouse differ greatly from an operational. Performance in an operational environment, speed is of the essence. Content focus. Operational systems tend to focus on small work areas, not the entire enterprise. Tools. Lack a large amount of tools accessibility for users. Benefits of data warehousing systems. Consistent and quality data. Cost reduction. More timely data access. Improve performance and productivity. Data Warehouse Architecture Data warehouses provide a means to make information available for decision making. The Data Warehouse The Central Data Warehouse M database is a cornerstone of the data warehousing environment. This type of data is, is mostly implemented using a relational DBMS, RDBMS. Data transformation. The functionality of data transformation includes removing unwanted data from operational databases, converting to common data names and definitions, calculating summaries and derived data, establishing defaults for missing data, accommodating source data definition changes. The data sourcing, cleanup, extraction, transformation, and migration tools have to deal with some important issues as follows. Database heterogeneity. DBMS can vary in data models, data access languages, data navigation operations, concurrency, integrity, recovery. Data heterogeneity. This is the difference in the way data is defined and used in different models, homonyms, synonyms, unit incompatibility, different attributes for the same entity, and different ways of modeling the same fact. Metadata The metadata repository should contain information such as that listed below. Description of the data model Description of the layouts used in the database design Definition of the primary system managing the data items. A map of the data from the system of record to the other locations in the data warehouse, including the descriptions of transformations and aggregations. Specific database design definitions. Data element definitions, including rules for derivations and summaries. Access tools. The front-end user tools can be divided into five major groups. Data query and reporting tools. Application development tools. Executive information systems, EIS, tools. Online analytical processing. OLAP, tools. Data mining tools. Query and reporting tools. Managed query tools shield end users from the complexities of SQL and database structures by inserting a meta layer between users and the database. Application development tools. Often, the analytical needs of the 
data warehouse user community exceed the built-in capabilities of query and reporting tools. Executive Information Systems EIS Tools The target users of EIS tools are senior management of a company. They are used to transform information and present that information to users in a meaningful and usable manner. OLAP These tools are based on concepts of multidimensional database and allow a sophisticated user to analyze the data using elaborate, multidimensional, and complex views. Data mining tools Data mining can be defined as the process of discovering meaningful new correlation, patterns, and trends by digging. Mining large amounts of data stored in warehouse using artificial intelligence, AI, and or statistical or mathematical techniques. Data visualization. Data warehouses are causing a surge in popularity of data visualization techniques for looking at data. Data marts. The concept of data mart is causing a lot of excitement and attracts much attention in the data warehouse industry. Information Delivery System The information delivery system distributes warehouse store data and other information objects to other data warehouses and end-user products such as spreadsheets and local databases. Data Warehouse Development Data Warehouse Blueprint Data Warehouse Blueprint should include Clear documentation of the following items. Requirements. What does the business want from the data warehouse? Architecture blueprint. How will you deliver what the business wants? Development approach. What is a clear definition of phase delivery cycles including architectural review and refinement processes? Data architecture. As shown in figure 15.1, a data warehouse is presented as a network of databases. The subcomponents of the data architecture will include the enterprise data warehouse, metadata repository, data marts, and multidimensional data stores. Transformation A data architecture needs to provide a clear understanding of transformation requirements that must be supported, including logic and complexity. This is one area in which the architectural team will have difficulty finding commercially available software to manage or assist with the process. Data cleansing. In addition to finding tools to automate the transformation process, the developer should also evaluate the complexity behind data transformations. Buried data. Often, legacy systems use composite keys to uniquely define data. Although these fields appear as one in a database, they represent multiple pieces of information. Figure 15.3 illustrates buried data by showing a vehicle identification number that contains many pieces of information. Data Architecture Requirements As a summary of the data architecture design, this section lists the main requirements placed on a data warehouse. Subject Oriented Data Time-based data. Update processing. Aggregation. Granularity. Metadata management. Application architecture. An application architecture determines how users interact with a data warehouse. A sampling of user category definitions are listed below. Power users. Technical users who require little or no support to develop complex reports and queries. Frequent users. Less technical users who primarily interface with the power users for support but sometimes require the IT department to support them. Casual users. These users touch the system and computers infrequently. Requirements of tools. Tools must be made available to users to access a data warehouse. These tools should be carefully selected so that they are efficient and compatible with other parts of the architecture and standards. Executive Information Systems EIS. As mentioned earlier, these tools transform information and present that information to users in a meaningful and usable manner. 
Decision Support Systems, DSS. DSS tools are intended for more technical users who require more flexibility and ad hoc analytical capabilities. Ad hoc query and reporting. The purpose of EIS and DSS applications is to allow business users to analyze, manipulate, and report on data using familiar, easy-to-use interfaces. Production Report Writer A production report writer allows the development staff to build and deploy reports that will be widely exploited by the user community in an efficient manner. Application Development Environments ADE ADE are nothing new and many people overlook the need for such tools within a data warehouse tool suite. Other tools. Although the tools just described represent minimum requirements, you may find a need for several other specialty tools. Technology Architecture. It is in the Technology Architecture section of the Blueprint that hardware, software, and network topology are specified to support the implementation of the data warehouse. Clients. The client technology component comprises the devices that are utilized by users. Servers. The server technology component includes the physical hardware platforms as well as the operating systems that manage the hardware. Networks. The network component defines the transport technologies needed to support communication activities between clients and servers. Star Schema Design Data warehouses can best be modeled using a technique known as Star Schema Modeling. It defines data entities in a way that supports the decision maker's view of a business, as well as data entities that reflect the important operational aspects of the business. A Star Schema contains three logical entities, Dimension, Measure, and category detail, or category for short. Translating information into a star schema. During the data gathering process, an information package can be constructed based on which a star schema is formed. Data extraction and cleansing. Extraction specifications. The data extraction part of a data warehouse is a traditional design process. There is an obvious data flow with inputs being operational systems and output being the data warehouse. Loading data. Data needs to be processed for extraction and loading. An SQL select statement shown below is normally used in the process. Select target column list. From source table list. Where join and filter list. Group by or order by sort and aggregate list. Multiple passes of data. Some complex extractions need to pull data from multiple systems and merge the resultant data while performing calculations and transformations for placement into a data warehouse. Staging area. A staging area, which is simply a temporary work area, can be used to manage transactions that will be further processed to develop data warehouse transactions. Checkpoint Restart Logic The concept of checkpoint restart has been around for many years. It was originated in batch processing on mainframe computers. Data Loading after data has been extracted, it is ready to be loaded into a data warehouse. In the data loading process, cleansed and transformed data that now complies with the warehouse standards is moved into the appropriate data warehouse entities. Data Warehousing and Data Mining A data warehouse assembles data from heterogeneous databases so that users need only query a single system. In general, the warehouse system will answer the query as it is and will not attempt to extract further or implicit information from the data. General Introduction to Data Mining Data Mining Concepts Data mining is a process of extracting previously unknown, valid, and actionable information from large sets of data and then using the information to make crucial business decisions. Benefits of data mining Direct marketing 
the ability to predict who is most likely to be interested in what products can save companies immense amounts in marketing expenditures. Trend Analysis Understanding trends in the marketplace is a strategic advantage because it is useful in reducing costs and timeliness to market. Fraud Detection Data mining techniques can help discover which insurance claims, cellular phone calls, or credit card purchases are likely to be fraudulent. Forecasting in financial markets Data mining techniques are extensively used to help model financial markets. Mining online Websites today find themselves competing for customer loyalty. Comparing data mining with other techniques. Query tools versus data mining tools. With a query tool, a user can ask a question. A data mining process tackles the broader underlying goal of a user. OLAP tools versus data mining tools. OLAP deals with the facts or dimensions typically containing transaction data relating to a firm's products, locations, and times. The methodology of data mining involves the extraction of hidden predictive information from large databases. Still, another difference between OLAP and data mining is how they operate on the data. Data Mining Tasks the most common types of data mining tasks classify based on the kind of knowledge they are looking for are listed as follows. Classification. Data records are grouped into some meaningful subclasses. Sequence detection. By observing patterns in the data, sequences are determined. Data dependency analysis. Potentially interesting dependencies, relationships or associations between data items are detected. Deviation analysis. For example, John went to the bank on Saturday, but he did not go to the grocery store after that. Instead, he went to a football game. With this task, anomalous instances and discrepancies are found. Techniques for data mining. Data mining is an integration of multiple technologies these include data management such as database management, data warehousing, statistics, machine learning, decision support, and others such as visualization and parallel computing. Data mining directions and trends. It is desirable to have data mining tools that can switch to multiple techniques and support multiple outcomes. Some of the current trends in data mining are illustrated in Figure 15.13. Data Mining Process The Process Overview In general, when people talk about data mining, they focus primarily on the actual mining and discovery aspects. The idea sounds intuitive and attractive. However, mining data is only one step in the overall process. Figure 15.14 illustrates the process as a multi-step, iterative process. Data Mining Algorithms Popular Data Mining Techniques Decision Trees Decision Trees, or, a series of if, or, then rules, as a commonly used machine learning algorithm are powerful and popular tools for classification and prediction. Neural Networks Neural networks, an N, are another popular data mining technique. An, an N is a system of software programs and data structures that approximates the operation of the brain 